Hello and welcome to the episode 212 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. We finish off July talking, among other things, about a return from Greece, a farewell message and the start of the recording of Hey Jude. Let's start with the 31st of July 1961 double feature for the Beatles. The lads, still with Pete Best on drums, had a lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club, their 20th, and then played the Little Land Town Hall at night. Two years later, in 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr, were at the Imperial Ballroom in Nelson, entertaining some 2,000 fans. Fast forward to 1967. On this date, John, Cynthia and Julian Lennon, Paul McCartney, Jane Asher, Alexis Mardas and Paula Boyd returned to London, thus ending their Greek holiday. The Beatles' plans to buy a group of islands off the Aegean Sea, to live there with their collaborators, family and friends in a commune of sorts, would never come to fruition. Also today, Ringo Starr was at the Radio London Central Office to record an 11-second farewell message from him and all the other Beatles. The Pirate Radio was to close down on the 14th of August and the Beatles wanted to show their support to the radio until the end. The message was broadcast during the last programme of Radio London, on the 14th of August. In 1968, the Apple Boutique in Baker Street, London, closed down. The Beatles had decided on the matter on the previous day, when it became obvious to everyone that the business was never going to be able to be what they intended it to be. Something different from the other boutiques, something fun and exciting that would counter all the boring businesses out there. The shop gave away all of its stock, and hundreds of people queued for a chance to grab some of the expensive garment previously on sale. Unbeknownst to the public, the Beatles had their pick before anyone else. The night before, we all went in and took what we wanted. It wasn't much, t-shirts. It was great. It was like robbing. We took everything we wanted home, John Lennon is reported saying in the Beatles anthology book. Apple tailoring instead remained open, but it was removed from Apple Core and handed over completely to its manager, Australian designer John Crittle. Also on this date, the Beatles had a proper go at recording Hey Jude after two days of rehearsals. Working from 2 pm to 4 am at Trident Studios, the band made good use of the Trident's big attraction, an 8 track recording machine. The EMI Studios still used 4-track recorders. 8-tracks had become common in the business. The first 16-track recorders will be installed during 1968 in the United States, but the EMI management had been slow to react. In fact, the Abbey Road facilities actually had an 8-track machine at the time, but it had not been installed yet. Anyhow, George Martin produced the 14-hour session, with the Fabs recording four takes of the rhythm track, with Paul on piano and guide vocals, John on acoustic guitar, George on electric guitar and Ringo on drums. Take one was chosen as the best. In many years from now, Paul McCartney recalls, there is an amusing story about recording it. We were at Trident Studios in Soho, and Ringo walked out to go to the toilet, and I hadn't noticed. The toilet was only a few yards from his drum booth, but he'd gone past my back, and I still thought he was in his drum booth. I started what was the actual take, and Hey Jude goes on for hours before the drums come in, and while I was doing it, I suddenly felt Ringo tiptoeing past my back rather quickly, trying to get to his drums, and just as he got to his drums, boom, 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 his timing was absolutely impeccable. Before closing this episode, let me remind you to please visit www.simonmas.com support if you're finding this series worth your while. You can do a lot to show me how fab you are, and I do need all the help you can give me 
to keep on producing the best music-related content I can. Thank you! On the 31st of July 1969, working at the EMI Studios between 2.30 pm and 1.30 am, Paul McCartney re-recorded his bass and piano part on You Never Give Me Your Money. Then, drums, timpani, guitar and vocals were overdubbed or re-recorded on Golden Slumber's Carry That Weight. The Abbey Road medley was getting to its final sound. And we're getting to the end of another glorious month of our Beatles history ride. Thank you for having been with me this far. I hope you will find the remaining episodes even more exciting. Tomorrow we'll talk about the last time all four Beatles were in a studio together. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.